Hey guys, what's up? My name's Kayla from Planning with Kay and welcome to another video. As you can probably tell from the title, this is gonna be something a little bit different than usual, which is my first ever draw with me. If you follow my Instagram or have watched any of my flip through videos, you guys probably already know that I love throwing in decoration pages throughout my bullet journal. They give me a chance to unwind, relax, and just create art for the sake of art without it needing to serve any sort of function in my bullet journal. So I decided that I would sit down today and film the creation of one of these decoration pages. And I also wanted to take the chance to answer some of your questions. I asked on my Instagram for you guys to send me any burning questions that you had, and I chose a few of those today to answer in this video. Let me know if you guys enjoy this Q&A style voiceover as well as the draw with me style video. I'm trying to experiment with the content that I put on this channel and your guys' feedback is always wanted. So don't be shy and let me know your opinions in the comment section below. So we'll start off the questions with Tina who asked, where do I get the inspiration for my bullet journal layouts? Most of my inspiration comes from Instagram, which is definitely my favorite social media platform for finding different layout ideas for my journal. Whenever I'm scrolling through my feed, if I see a layout that somebody has created that I really love or think that I might want to try later, I will always save that post. That way, the next time that I need some inspiration for a new layout, I can just go to that collection and browse all of the posts that I've saved in the past. Another good way to find specific layout inspiration is to search for hashtags on Instagram. Hashtags like bullet journal weekly log, bullet journal monthly log, bullet journal daily log are all full of gorgeous spreads that are bound to give you some inspiration for your own journal. Next up, TJ asks, what brush pens do I recommend for beginners? Now I may not be the number one person to answer this question simply because compared to others, I feel like I haven't used very many brands since I started bullet journaling, but I can still give some insight into my favorite markers and pens for brush lettering. Since day one, my absolute favorite brush pens have definitely been the Tombow dual brush pens. They are dual sided with a fat brush tip on one end and then a fine felt tip on the other. So I find them to be incredibly versatile for use in my bullet journal. I use these for basically every single page in my journal, and they're actually the first brush pens that I ever purchased when I first started my bullet journal a little bit more than a year ago. So in my opinion, they're definitely good for beginners learning brush lettering. They also have a very wide color variety, and I especially love all of their more pastel colors. And I would say the one downside of the Tombow dual brush pens is the price tag. They retail for roughly $3 a pen, I believe, so they aren't the cheapest option out there, but I do think that they are worth the money. My other all-time favorite marker for brush lettering are the Crayola Super Tips. These are a much cheaper option than the Tombows, and they're only about $8 for a pack of 50, and they're actually also a lot better than the Tombows in some ways. The big thing for me is that I find that the tips of these markers don't fray as easily as the Tombows do. So even after using them for a long time, I'm still able to get really clean lettering done with them as if they're brand new. They also come in a great variety of colors as well. And I find that for the Crayolas, I prefer the brighter colors. And then for pastels, I prefer to use my Tombows. So all in all, if you're a beginner and you wanna pick up a big pack of markers without breaking the bank, I definitely would recommend anybody buy a pack of 50 Crayola Super Tips. And then alongside that, if you want, you can buy one or two of the Tombow Dual Brush Pens, so that way you can get used to writing with those and then expand your collection as you start to improve. Going along with that question, Whitney asked what markers and pens I use on a regular basis. So the Tombow Dual Brush Pens and the Crayola Super Tips are basically all I use as far as brush pens and colorful markers go. And then for my trusty black felt tip pen that I use throughout my journal, I'm currently alternating between two of my favorites, which are the Tombow Mono Drawing Pens in the size 01 and 03, and then the Pigma Micron Fineliner in 03. 
If you want to see a full video on my essential supplies or see a demo of anything that I've mentioned so far, I do already have a video of that on my channel, so I'll link that in the corner right here, as well as in the description of this video. Since I know you guys are really interested in supplies, I thought I'd answer one more supply-related question, which comes from Brianne and asks, which notebook do I prefer, my Scribbles That Matter notebook or the Term 1917? So this notebook that I'm currently working in is the Scribbles That Matter Pro Notebook, but my previous three journals have all been in the Term 1917 Doc Grid notebooks. They're all A5-sized Doc Grid notebooks, and they both retail for about $20. The main difference between these two notebooks is the page thickness. So the Scribbles That Matter notebook has noticeably thicker pages, which means that you're gonna get less ghosting, less bleed through and all that jazz, but you also get fewer pages because of it. So the Scribbles That Matter has 200 pages while the Leuchterm has 250 pages. Both notebooks have an index section, two bookmarks and a back pocket. And then the Scribbles That Matter also has a pre-made key section for your bullet code and color code, as well as a pen test page in the back. So for the same price, the Scribbles That Matter notebook definitely has a few extra perks, um, and it's probably better for anybody dealing with heavier materials such as watercolor or some more bleed heavy pens or markers. For me personally, I never had any issues with bleeding or ghosting in my Loic term with the supplies that I use. So I honestly totally recommend both products. I think that they're both amazing notebooks for bullet journalists. And in the end, if you're more concerned with fitting more into your journal, then I'd probably recommend getting the 250 page Loic term. And if you're more concerned with having thicker pages, then the Scribbles That Matter is a great option. Next, Lily and Lynn both asked about how I started bullet journaling and how I decided to open a shop and start selling stickers. I discovered bullet journaling in October of 2016, yep, that's right, 2016, while watching YouTube videos. And now I really wish that I could remember exactly whose channel it was that I stumbled across or like what was the first video that I watched. Um, whoever it was, thank you. Because once I started watching bullet journal videos online, I was instantly obsessed. I remember I was constantly telling my boyfriend about it and about how badly I wanted to start my own bullet journal. So for about a month, I just kept watching videos and I brainstormed about the spreads that I would want to include in my first journal. I think I remember that I just sketched out ideas in my spiral bound school notebooks until in November, I bought my very first Loic term and then I set up my first bullet journal. I also have a full flip through of that entire first journal on my channel, which I'll link right here again if you wanna see how I started out. So then as far as starting a sticker shop, I think the idea came up because of a few other bullet journalists that I knew that had Etsy shops selling stickers. Um, I know Journal Spiration is the main one that comes to mind. She releases these insanely beautiful monthly sticker kits in her shop. And I'll have her link below in the description if you want to go check her shop out. But just seeing other sticker shops planted that idea in my mind before I even had decided that I wanted to open up my own shop. Separately, I knew that I really wanted to save up for an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil because I really wanted to start to get more into digital art and digital design. Um, before that, I had this little hand-me-down Wacom tablet that I would use every once in a while to draw digitally in Adobe Illustrator. And after using that for about a year or so, I finally saved up for the iPad and I got it and I totally fell in love with how easy it was to draw digitally using the app Procreate on my iPad. And I realized that with this new tool, I could now really, really easily create designs for potential bullet journal stickers. So I did some research for a while on how to make stickers, what supplies I'd need, how my packaging and shipping would possibly work. And I talked with some of my Instagram pals for a while about wanting to start my own shop until finally I pulled the trigger and I launched my Etsy shop in the middle of last year. I was definitely nervous about it totally flopping as I'm sure everybody who opens an online shop feels at the very beginning. At that point, I'd never actually tried selling something that I created before, so it was a really big jump in into a totally unknown world, but I felt confident enough to do it because of the support I had from my Instagram friends, the whole community on Instagram, as well as 
my boyfriend, who was always super supportive of me using my talents to start a business. I really saw the potential in my shop once I released my first monthly kit, which was my citrus kit. That was a big turning point where I just realized that people really liked my designs. And if I kept creating quality products that I myself want to use in my own journal, then there was a large portion of my audience who would want to buy the same stickers for their own journal. So then Lynn also wanted to know if I had a job before going full-time with my bullet journaling and sticker business. And yes, I graduated from UC Berkeley with a degree in mechanical engineering. So I was working at a national lab as an engineer for six months after graduation until I decided to quit, move to Portland, and pursue this business full-time at the start of this year. And again, I just want to give a big thank you to all of you guys in this community, um, my boyfriend Jake and my parents for being so supportive of me doing that, of, you know, quitting my sort of more stable nine to five job uh, to pursue this business so soon. Um, all of your guys' support is what makes me, you know, believe in myself and think that I can really do this and that I can succeed in this. And that just means the world to me. So thank you all. Next up, another sticker-related question. Elisa, um, sorry if I'm mispronouncing any of these names, by the way, but I think it's Elisa, asked if I plan on selling stickers that aren't bullet journal specific. So one idea that I'll probably execute soon are vinyl stickers, which are those more durable, glossy, waterproof stickers that you can put on like your laptop or your binder or your water bottle more as a decorative piece rather than a functional item like my bullet journal stickers are. I want a way to challenge myself artistically and create more full-scale art pieces that I can then sell somehow, so I think vinyl stickers would be an awesome way to branch out and give you guys something that you can use to decorate anything you want, not just your journal, and all instill in my same style. It's not happening quite yet though. I still have to do some research on supplies and such, but it's something I've definitely been thinking about. So let me know if that's something that y'all would be interested in, or if you have any ideas for other products that you'd like to see available in the future. So those are all the questions that I'm going to answer today in this video. Again, if you enjoyed this Q&A, definitely let me know in the comments so that I know whether or not you guys enjoy this sort of thing. And if you do, um, I can definitely incorporate it more onto my channel. I really love how this decoration page ended up turning out with the florals and the crystals, so much so that I decided to use it as inspiration for a full digital piece, which I then turned into a full page sticker that you can use as a decoration page in your own journal. I have both a full color version and a black and white version if you want to use it as a coloring page to color in yourself, and it's available in my shop right now. As always, the link to that will be in the description below. For fun, I also launched a little Teespring campaign and I threw this design on a shirt, a crew neck sweatshirt, and a tote bag. Mostly, honestly, just because I wanted to order one myself. Um, but if that interests you at all, I will also have the link 
to that in the description below. Okay guys, that is it for my first draw with me. I hope you guys enjoyed the style video. If you did, definitely give this video a like. And if you wanna see more Q&A videos, let me know by leaving a question down in the comments below and I may answer it in a future video. Follow me on Instagram if you're not already at Planning with K. And as always, all the links to my shop and social medias will be in description below. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.